folks, we have a little bit of an issue here. This current video which you're watching right now is actually a reshoot. And the reason why that is, is because, well, originally, I already filmed, or rather recorded, the segment here, the introduction and unwrapping segment. And I've already unwrapped this cassette. This is just a second um, copy of the cassette which I have. Um, but the problem is, I was going to record the audio test right now, but the thing is, while I was clearing up storage in my camera's SD card, I accidentally also deleted the introduction video. And this camera, this DSLR which I have, there's no like recently deleted thing, and so yeah, I accidentally deleted that footage, and so I'm just going to try to reenact it, although I've already unwrapped the cassette. So anyway, here we are with the 1997 Axia PS1 normal position, normal bias tape, which is, once again, for CD. In last week's video, which you can check up here in the corner, I talked about 4 CD cassettes, and in particular, I covered this Sony CD-IX2 from 1992. And in the end, it turned out to be a pretty good cassette, in fact. And even though it was just leftover UX tape, at least that's what I think it is, it sounds very decent, indeed. Um, however, this Axia PS1 is not... Um, is not leftover tape. This is Axia's own formulation. It's a new formulation because this is actually um, not their bottom of the line. Because on the other hand, this uh, CDIX2 was Sony's bottom of the line Type 2. This PS1 is more mid range because it is above their basic Type 1, which is the Axia A1. And so this Axia PS1 should ideally be, well, pretty good, especially for a 4CD tape, which um, honestly gets a pretty bad rap over in the cassette community. So, let's take a look at the wrapper, although, once again, I've said I've already unwrapped it, so anyway. 54 PS1 Normal Position Axia Trendy Quality Creative, with Japanese there, and then 4CD. On the back, it's interesting because it's actually vertical, the way how they laid it out. And so, I'm going to bring it closer to the camera, then I'm just going to be moving the camera around here. Axia PS1, with a bunch of Japanese, if I go further down, you can see it's clear in the middle. And then 54, then a barcode, and then some more Japanese, then Axia PS1J54. Here, again, Axia PS1J54, same thing on the opposite side. Over here it says Axia PS1 with some Japanese and then 54. And finally on the top it says Axia PS1 54 with open as well. That's how you, well, open the wrapper. Now I have already opened this wrapper like I mentioned. But I will say before that, that um, actually, this uh, wrapper here, it's not one of those ones where, not one of the traditional kind of wrappers where the there's like a thread or something made of plastic inside which you just um, rip off and then the whole thing splits apart into two. This is just literally um, a weak part in the plastic wrapping. And so... Yeah, I wonder why the, uh, I don't know what you call it, but it's the same kind of wrapper that, that they use in like cigarette packs and card decks. Um, I don't know why it fell out of fashion in, you know, cassettes, but it just did sometime in the mid 90s. And I don't know, it's weird. Anyway, I've already unwrapped this, but unfortunately you cannot see me unwrap it because once again, I unfortunately deleted the footage while I was in a rush to record the audio test. Again, I am very, very sorry for that. But 
here is the tape. Now this uses Axia's, or rather Fuji's in this case, because, you know, Fuji owns Axia. You can see my video on it up here. Um, this is actually their ultra slim case, that's what they call it. Because it's a very peculiar case in which you can see here, for example, in this Sony tape, this is one of the more standard slim cases in which when you open it up, the entire half here, it goes out, right? But for this type of um, case, which is used only in Axia tapes, mind you, it does not open all the way. It ends around here, and so it opens just, just a little bit, you know, only most of it is on the hinge, but not everything. And the tape itself is actually upside down with regard to the J card, or rather in this case, the L card. So first, let's take a look at the tape itself. Once again, Axia PS1, Axia, normal position, Axia's stable tape running mechanism. They put that a lot in, in their 90s tapes. PS1, side A54, and this piece of random words for marketing. Exciting sound and design for music fan. Yes, of course, because only music fans like tapes that look good. Yeah, they really did that back in the 90s because, of course, the cassette was losing to the CD in terms of popularity by then. And it's the exact same thing on side B, except, of course, instead of A, it says B, and the printing is actually on the other side. They flipped sides on side B. Yeah, pun intended. They flipped sides. If we um, use the bic now, you can see the ladder is... The ladder, the leader, is very short. The reason why they did this is because by this time, Many, many decks were already, and players as well, were auto-reverse. And so they wanted the leader to be um, only enough to protect this little part while it's being stored, but still short enough where it almost instantly flips to the other side. That's why, like, less than a second after I start winding, the tape already appears. So you can see here... The, this tape is very brown. Um, like many Type 1s during this time, this is a Fairy Cobalt Type 1. The, uh, the, iron, the iron oxide layer, or the ferric layer, is doped with cobalt particles. And so, it's able to, to take more level, and it has less noise. At least ideally. I hope to hear that during the audio test. Now let's look at the case. Once again, it's the ultra slim case. And the stickers, it says here original. I'm not sure why you wanna put that on your cassette, but I guess the Japanese people, the Japanese public wanted to say that their cassettes are Original, anyway. 1997, which is the release date of this tape. Then there's also 98 and 99. I believe that's just in case, you know, somebody stumbled upon this cassette in the market during those two years, but they already made new models by, those, by that time. And the Japanese characters, which I don't understand, volumes 1 and 2. So, if you want to make a 90s version of the Guardians of the Galaxy Awesome Mix, you could totally do that, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Um, although, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 might come out in the coming years. So, yeah, this will be outdated if you want to do that by then. I, I don't know where I'm getting at. Anyway, it's just on the uh, top two, it's just blank with NR on or off. Then on the back, it's Japanese again, and it 
I believe it should talk about like how to take care of your cassettes, I think. I don't know though, since I don't read Japanese. Okay, now let's look at the L card. On the back here, it's a very, it's a rather futuristic design. Um, in which it has, like in yellow, it's printed on there a bunch of weird tech stuff, at least pseudo tech stuff. It's just trying to pretend. I don't know what it's trying to do here. But it wants to look cool for the for the young kids, you know what I mean? And um, PS1, in color, mind you, they don't do this a lot. Um, side A, normal, normal position, and side B. And then here on the spine, of course, Axia PS1. Then on the back, it's a more plain version, which is literally just, you know, A, PS1, normal position, B, Axia PS1 in black and white. So yeah, um, that's basically all I can say right now about this, this here tape. And uh, once again, I would like to sincerely apologize um, for accidentally deleting all of the footage. But nonetheless, we must keep calm and carry on. And I shall be doing the audio test on this right now. All right, so we are here with the Pioneer TD7 cassette deck, which, by the way, I reviewed in this video up here in the corner. And um, once again, although the flex and digital noise reduction indicators are turned on in the deck, they will not be enabled in the audio because while recording, if you are monitoring your recording using the three head system, then the digital noise reduction and flex will not work. Just keep that in mind because um, I've had some people message me saying like, you know, they, they thought that the flex and digital NR were on during the recording, but no, they, they're not, okay? So whatever hiss you hear in the cassette is the natural hiss from that cassette. Anyway, let's plop the Axia PS1 from 1997 into the deck. I'm going to fast forward it a little bit before I enable the BLE XD or the XD flat or the auto bias calibration. Alright, so now we've got our cassette being calibrated and the song we're going to be using today is called Block Party by Bad Snacks. It's a uh, funky dance and electronic track from the YouTube audio library and it seems our tape is done calibrating. I've already set the level on this um, deck to peak at around plus three. And so we're going to see if the cassette can actually handle that kind of level. But anyway, without further ado, let's begin Block Party by Bad Snacks.
So, what do I think about this cassette? Well, I think this is a perfectly fine, perfectly good, and perfectly normal type 1, pun intended. And, um, yeah, there, there was a bit of, um, there was a bit of a drop in terms of the high-end frequencies, and from what I can remember, it could not exactly match the level of the source, it was a tiny bit lower. But nonetheless, it is a perfectly fine um, Type 1. It's basically what you should expect from a Type 1, really, and the uh, mid-range one. The noise was quite evident in the beginning during the softer parts of the song, the, the first few seconds which were, you know, really soft. But by the time the song got louder, you know, um, the noise was barely noticeable. And uh, yeah, the frequencies, all in all, the high frequencies suffered a little bit. But other than that, it's pretty good, in fact. So uh, yeah, that's about it for this video. Um, apologies once again for not being able to... Uh, if, rather, apologies for accidentally deleting the original footage of me unwrapping the cassette. Um, I no longer have the wrapper of this one, I already threw it away, but rest assured this is the exact same one, like exact same design and everything. Just imagine in your heads, you know, just imagine me ripping it apart. <laughs> That's basically the footage of me opening it. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say really. But next week, rest assured, I shall be reviewing another cassette from the 90s. So, uh, yeah, thank you all so very much for watching. And uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, you know, all of that YouTube algorithm stuff. You can check out a playlist of all of my cassette videos up here in the corner. And I hope all of you are having a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are, and I hope to see you again in the next video. Goodbye.